Good evening and welcome. My name is Valerie Bell, and I'm the new director of the Athens Regional Library System. I want to thank you all for coming this evening in support of two of Athens' greatest treasures, Bob and Claire Clements. As, you, as many of you know, the Clements are vital in the necessary part of the fabric of the Athens community. Their art <coughs> reminds us to notice, to pay attention, and to celebrate this place we call home. The Athens Clark County Library is very pleased to be able to share and celebrate their work with you. To begin our program this evening, I have the pleasure of introducing Mike Spronk. Mike is the founder and former president of American Business Consultants, Inc. He has been a resident of Athens for two decades and is well known for his social work. He took up, the art, of, he took up art at the age of 75 and is a close friend of the two creators of tonight's regional library exhibition. Mike. What a pleasure and privilege it is to introduce the two celebrity artists whose exhibition you will view here tonight at the Athens Clark Library. May I be the first to compliment each of you who are here because of your interest in and support of the arts. It was once said, getting and spending, we lay waste our powers. You are among the far too few who recognize the importance of art in our mental well-being and in the enjoyment of our lives. Great art has transformed the environment of our homes and the ecology of our public lands. Introduce may not be the most appropriate word for my role tonight, since many of you have known these two outstanding leaders in the community for more years than I have. Two giants they are, really, and in so many ways. Famous artists, of course, but also revered teachers, leaders in civic enterprise, good neighbors, and dear friends. Were I an accomplished artist, I could wax eloquent about the quality and the excitement of their work how in private exhibitions or on public display, right here at the library, for example, your eye is immediately drawn to the strength and beauty of their work. Each of them in a variety of media, two dimension or three, display powerful compositions, deep perspective, endless variety of dramatic or delicate hues fine edges and bold strokes. Their accomplishments have been acknowledged and recognized. They've each received a great variety, profuse variety of awards and prizes by grants and commissions, proffered by individuals, by corporations, by art guilds, major museums, state and national, and government agencies. The list of their accomplishments and the accolades in their curriculum vitae of both of the artists extends to multiple pages, each one of which would be too important to leave out and far too many for the time available this evening. Were I an academic dean, I would detail their illustrious careers as professors on university faculties, including UGA. I would tell you how arduously they worked, each in their respective fields of education, to cultivate, nurture, and train their students over a period of many years. Now retired, they are both justifiably proud of their dedicated service to America's art future a service that they continue to render pro bono. Were I a regional historian, I would cite their extensive contributions, individually and collectively, to the well-being of many artistic organizations. For this, despite their eminence as individual artists, this is 
what they are best known for, for inspiring, teaching, and supporting other artists. What a pleasure it is to be invited to one of their paint outs at their home or at many of the local scenes and sites of serene beauty. While creating their own artwork, they mingle with the group. They offer encouragement and helpful advice to those who ask for it. At the post-session critiques, they identify the good qualities of each artist's endeavors. Were I an art curator, I would cite the integrity and the ingenuity of their creations. They each individually have identifiable, innovative work. Each is at the vanguard of artistic enterprise, finding new ways to present and showcase common subjects. And those of us who have any background in art see that immediately. And so, too, their work is uniquely identifiable. Attend an exhibition, and immediately you see the special genre of their own work. Their works are on display in national and state museums, private homes, the offices of major corporations, and an extensive variety of NGO and government buildings. We Athenians are privileged to see their artistic talent at a series of local and regional juried exhibitions, also on highway billboards, in public parks, on the lawn of this library, and recently in the governor's office. Were I a public official, I would cite to you the tremendous value of these two civic-minded people as tireless advocates of public art. On our behalf, they have sought and obtained grants for murals, billboards, banners, statues, monuments to beautify and memorialize public lands and structures. Also, the support and participation that they provide in an endless number of local art, civic, and social service organizations. To name a few, the Linden House Art Center, Athica, the Athens Art Association, the Athens Area Arts Council, the University Women's Club, OSHA Lifelong Learning Institute, and so many others. They not only support these organizations, but also the members. Their home is filled with artistic works purchased from local artists and craftsmen, for which we all thank you. It is my honor and privilege to tonight introduce you to our two eminent artistic celebrities whose work is now on display. Dr. Claire B. Clements and Dr. Robert D. Clements or as they are known to most of you, Bob and Claire, Claire and Bob. <laughs> themes are people and plants. People and plants. This belongs to um, one of the, a patron um, in Athens, and um, it's called Sumari, and divine bliss. And it's got circles in it. And I'm interested in shapes and colors and textures and patterns in the principles of art. I'm interested in theme and variation and circles. I've developed, I've developed a theme of circles as well as plants and variation of color, variation of line, thick and thin lines, colors, the red, the pink, 
all relating to each other and a lot of variety. This is one of my very most recent ones, American Honeysuckle, and um, it grows on our house. That's the lamp, the post that it hangs on, and I've done a few of that thing. Uh, I have to really, really have a lot of feeling, a lot of feeling for all of the things that I do art, that I make with my art. If I don't have feeling for it, I, I really can't do it. And so Bob plants a lot of things around our land, our property, and um, I get to love them over time. These, are, these stem from the marigolds, and these are some of my most recent pieces. I work on them a very long time, uh, sometimes a year. I don't work every day on them, but they work, and my subconscious works on them. And I, I juggle things back and forth. Uh, this one I did with printing. I took the marigold leaves and dipped them into paint and stuck them right on the it right on that paper and um, kept on going until and then started with the cutting. Usually I make some very loose uh, paintings, like the yellow was from a field in Winterville um, and, the, and the purple heart was from our, was from our property. Um, the, the field is very, very loose and so was the purple heart, but then I got some definition with cutting. I cut the things, I, I paint and I cut and I glue. So this is like a doily, and it takes oops, excuse me, takes four hands, four hands to glue them. Um, and without four hands, they end up in a ball. I have to throw them away. So and that has happened to me. Bob's out of town, and I tried to glue them myself. I ruined it. I, one of my themes is thistle. I love thistle, even though the farmers hate thistle. Um, I understand they come up like for 20 years, something, they're all over the place, cows, no, they're not good. But I think that they're beautiful. This is one of my first thistle pieces, and we did this, I did this on 316 as you go around the corner to the Oconee Connector, and it was very hot. The, the traffic was zipping by, we really were just naive, we didn't realize how dangerous it was. Um, and I finally got so exasperated, I just took my fingers and printed my fingerprints all over it, so, and then said, that's it, it's done. It's done. And this one is also a thistle, and it is um, nine feet by five feet, and it stems from my thistle theme. It's a, it's a watercolor, and it's upstairs. Many of the ones I just showed you are upstairs. This is a very early work of mine. Um, ocean, this ocean, um, without a lot of subject matter. This is, this is also a very um, early work of mine. Um, I work very abstractly for a long time, think, thinking about things like texture, like space. Um, this is built up, I used to take Elmer's glue and mix it with plaster of Paris, put it on there and dig into it. And this is one of my very first works that are in low relief. I painted and then I cut. And this, I was a Sea Grant artist, and this is really the beginning of of my uh, cutting and gluing. I went down to the coast, we the rivers took Bob and I down to the coast, and um, there we met the Kinseys, and they, he worked for the Sea Grant Department, and he was working on edges, and I was working on edges, so it was like science and art doing the same thing, which is interesting. And his wife was taking pictures from the air. It's the first time I ever worked in my life, I ever, ever worked from somebody else's work. And I worked from her photographs, and it was very freeing, because then I could think about things like relief. I could think about things like the, shot, the space that goes to the back. I didn't have to worry about the composition. She had a great eye for composition. Early, earlier, earlier than that, um, I always did love to print. I was, a, I was a printmaker. That's the print. I, I made many of them, and they were Christmas cards. And that's my daughter, Megan, and she helped me. And that's our table, and <laughs> we're drying. And that was a, um, a memorable time. And I, I really didn't realize that I now, I used those circles then, and I didn't realize it, that I was doing it then. Um, and so when I finished my um, teaching, and I retired, and I teach my work at work with people with disabilities, um, and their families, for advocating for those people, I went to what I really cared about, and I lived on a lake, and I, I roamed the woods, and that's what I cared about, nature. This is our southeast Clark Park, and that, you can't see it, but that actually is me. These are one of my early cut paper pieces. I started, really started to cut paper. 
Um, do, I did a lot of painting, and it was very, very loose, and then I sharpened it up. I was so delighted to be able to sharpen things up. Because my stuff to me always looked like a big mess. But this seemed to give it some definition, so I liked it. This is um, Temple of the Hummingbird. Whoops, it's upside down. Uh, uh, the Hummingbird, <laughs> anyway, that's our front door with um, the pumps. Um, Buckeye, Bottle Bride Brush, Buckeye, Bottle Brush Buckeye, and Beyond was the name of my show at the, at the Botanical Garden. And it was, you can see it was sloppily painted, but inspired painting, and then cut and glued. Um, Mandina, the Mandina Forest. We had a lot of Mandina, and I loved the color red, and I just painted and started cutting, and the, the paintings sort of like just come out, almost like sculpture, they just kind of reveal themselves. This was an early work too. Had a lot of lines in it. Um, there are uh, about, the person that bought it, she didn't realize it, but her son said, you know there are frogs in that picture, and she counted. She said, how many frogs? <laughs> there are a whole bunch of frogs in there. I had the best time putting those frogs in there. Um, this is um, Songbirds in the Hosta Forest. You might have seen this on the Atlanta Highway, my billboard. I was very proud of my billboard. Um, I was actually delighted, so that was, that was one of my cut things. And then I kind of kept on cutting and cut, cutting and cutting until I got something that was still, it, I went back to that abstraction. So it has a lot of, I felt it had a lot of power to it. And this one was in the Unitarian magazine. And um, so they disseminated it all over the world. People called me up and so one woman said, I can't look at the rest of the magazine. I need this, I need this, I need this. So um, <laughs> I felt very good about it. But um, there are many layers. There's the the tan layer, there's a face layer, there's the orange layer, the gray layer, orange again, yellow orange, and then on top of that, the, the doily type that I cut out. So it's all put together. Then I had um, a theme of, of um, ice plant. Um, that's variations of ice plant. Ice plant grows marvelously here, it just pops up all over the place. And at um, Africa's first off-site exhibition space, I had G clay prints made of my ice plant, and they put them up as you go into the Athens Ford. They were huge, those things were very huge. Put them up there, and they stayed here for a long time, and I felt very happy about that. There they are. <laughs> it was a big job putting them up. Um, I wanted to tell you a couple of things um, that Matisse said. He says, I do not literally paint that table, but the emotion it produces upon me. And that's one of the ways that I work also. And Cezanne said, a work of art which did not begin in emotion is not art. And I definitely, I just feel that way. This is a, some of my people theme. This is a family. You can see one of the little kids has hair that sticks up and different things. I just had a lot of fun with that. And it's Yarrow. Um, Yarrow Moon Family was the name of it. So Yarrow grows in our yard. The family grows, just grows. <laughs> And in a natural setting. Some more people, some more circles. This came from Harry Lauder's walking stick. You know that plant that's like that? I would like to have to introduce I'd like to have my granddaughter, Audrey, come up and introduce the next speaker. <laughs> snow, a snowy day, and I could paint this from inside my house. <laughs> wonderful. No bugs, no. With the purple shadows. Oh, at the Thomas's Orchard. You know how beautiful it is? How many people have picnics out there? They, uh, they bring kids out and take photos of people. 
Oh, how Queen Anne's lace, I love Queen Anne's lace. So complicated, the flower structure and the fractals. Just amazing. That's in the shuttle. The seashore picture, uh, this heavy texture. This is in the collection of Sean McClellan's. It's in the case on the front. Okay, Southeast Park Park. I, I do a lot of paintings of canola fields. And uh, this one's in President Jerry Moorhead's home on Prince Avenue, <coughs> over his desk. Oh, here's Claire and I on a, on a, a little house. Um, arm in arm. Again. Armed core. Marina Byrne is singing. I saw her in the Athens Creative Theater production singing. Her mother's here tonight, Mary Duval. And uh, it's, it's just wonderful. She's at uh, my alma mater now, Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh. And drama, musical drama. This was in the Smithsonian Institution, National Museum of American Art. A clipper ship totem to Sandra Edward Brook of Massachusetts, first African American senator since Reconstruction. And this is a public art piece in Atlanta uh, for a recreation center for South Fan. Fought the city council for decades to get a recreation center for her community. Yeah. Uh, not about the area, and I did this uh, swimmers and basketball players. And this is in Los Altos, California. Musical gamble, many musicians and computers and painters all leaping to a big structure. This one got away. It was for Radio Free Europe and for Ontario Slovakia. I dilly dallied around. I did not sink the hook on the commission. And so they got a new director, and he did not have a fondness for art and had other priorities. Well, perhaps some of you remember this. It was at the University of Georgia for many years. And it was turned into a piece. For the South for the park in Atlanta. And by the way, this is a that's not the actual sculpture, that's something I did on the computer. So I make the rendering and then <coughs> and then maybe got a picture. And that's the top of the real sculpture. <coughs> and here and finally, I was so happy to try to he chose to make this sculpture for the Athens Park County Library with the use of learning up at the top, carrying a laptop computer, <laughs> pointing into the door of the library. And Mama, with her book, she's trying to read a couple more chapters on the way in. <laughs> and the little girl has a big book bag full, and the Teenager from the Clark Middle School just up the road is reading his book while he's doing his break dancing. <laughs> Thank you. I hope you'll enjoy the refreshments outside and are so honored by your presence here tonight. Thank you. Thank you.